Hey guys, and welcome back to Titan Tries. This week, I figured we would take a look at a sequel of a game that we played on the Dreamcast a few months back, about five, six months ago. Um, I'm talking about Air Force Delta Storm. I didn't think I actually had it. I didn't think I had the sequel, but I do. So we're going to take a look at it. And apart from like a quick test a few weeks ago, I've never actually played it myself. I thought it was a kind of like a upgraded remaster of the Dreamcast original. But apparently, it, no, it is actually a full blown sequel. Now, um, we are actually using the original Xbox hardware again. This is my heavily modded system uh, that died on me. Um, but I have managed to resurrect it by replacing the hard drive, which was a brand new hard drive that I put in, and I'm not really sure what happened with that, but I guess hard drives are going to hard drive. So, new hard drive installed, um, new games, all good stuff, reinstalled everything, good to go. Um, I, the trouble with the Xbox emulator is it's, it's getting there. You know, it really is getting there, but it's it's not as mature as, say, PlayStation emulation, PlayStation 2 emulation, that kind of thing. So while I do think in the future we will be able to sunset the Xbox hardware, sadly, we're just not quite there yet. Also, uh, I have bought, I actually pre-ordered this, kind of forgot about it, not going to lie. Uh, and I would have cancelled it uh, had I not forgotten about it. I am using the Retro Fighters Hunter, which is a brand new um, third party control pad for the original Xbox. Uh, so I'm trying this out. It is rechargeable, 10 hour battery life. I uh, haven't been able to put that to the test yet. It uses Hall Effect analog sticks and triggers <clears throat> so they use magnetic resistance instead of um you know contact resistance which you know all anal analog sticks are going to wear out eventually but by using the magnetic resistance there's actually no physical contacting moving parts so in theory they should last damn near forever my webcam is still not working <laughs> i will replace that and get a new one at some point later on down the year um but so i can't really show it off in this particular video however i do have a video planned for it some interesting features um it looks sort of like a cross between a xbox um, series controller and a original xbox controller s which is cool you've got your black and white button uh, buttons down at the bottom like like you always had uh, on the original xbox but what is freaking amazing about this controller is that you also have the trigger buttons uh, the shoulder buttons i should say above the triggers so you can use the black and white buttons if you would like which was always kind of like an odd thing or you can just use the shoulder buttons, which is absolutely incredible. The D-pad is leagues, leagues ahead of anything that was on the um, original Xbox. The only thing that I have a slight negative with it so far is there is quite a dead zone on the um, triggers before they actually activate. You actually have to push them in about one fifth of the way before they register. But once they register, they work flawlessly and because it's magnetic resistance. There's nothing in there to really, you know, wear out or catch or get stuck or anything like that. I am going to be buying another one of these <laughs> because I, I, I don't know how, you know, how quickly these are going to be sold out or whatever. Um, obviously, buying control pads for old consoles is a complete crapshoot most of which you know if you're going to buy an original controller for the xbox they're all same as playstation 2s even playstation 3s most of them are beaten they've been stuck up people's asses they've been chewed they've been licked they've been dribbled on they've been flushed down the toilet yeah it's a minefield 
So I always like to buy a new controller. The only problem with that is a lot of the cheap Chinese controllers that are on the market are a load of old ass. This one, very happy with it so far. It's also firmware updatable. So it hopefully that dead zone is going to be tweaked in the future. But anyway, whatever that that's not the, the point of this particular video. So let us go. And I will in a second have a look through my game split probably a good idea would be to plug my headset in so you're not blasted by my pc speakers so let's have a look shall we open the f drive and we are going to have a look at where is it it's here somewhere everything is somewhere air force delta so i printed out a bit of a blurb so the synopsis of the game is the story of Air Force Delta Storm unfolds in a fictional time period between 20X1 uh -huh, and 20X7. Okay, so the story unfolds over a six year period. Scientific technology has reached unprecedented heights, enabling the cure of almost all human diseases. However, this progress has led to overpopulation and a scarcity of basic necessities on Earth. In response, a highly industrialized nation that struggles to produce even enough food have formed the United Forces. They use their military advantage to siege uh, on to siege and seize agricultural lands. Meanwhile, nations threatened by the United Forces invasion have united their resources to form the Allied Forces. All right, um, this is all very generic so far. You have the United Forces against the Allied Forces. Sure. Well, this is made by Konami. Um, and it's obviously in the same sort of vein as Ace Combat. However, I haven't really played this one yet. Like I said, I played it a few minutes when I was sorting out my Xbox. And it, it doesn't have the budget, uh, let's just say, of that game. It is a significant step up from the Dreamcast one, though. So gameplay, players control various aircraft to engage enemies and accomplish missions. A new feature in Air Force Delta Storm is the world map, where players move their aircraft across checkpoints and fly to missions. Some checkpoints can be recaptured by the enemy. So players must manage their aircraft's range carefully. That is very interesting to me. So there's like a, a world map that actually has a war raging on it, I guess, and you can capture and lose territories. Okay. Oh, yeah? Oh, <laughs> I like that. Um, the game offers three levels of control, novice, expert, and ace. Novice simplifies the controls, and this is actually what I played it on originally because I didn't realize there was a choice of controls. Uh, novice simplifies controls whilst ace allows advanced maneuvers like air brakes and throttle adjustments. So this is interesting. Um, now, I do remember back in the day, they actually released a flight stick for this game for the Xbox. From what I can remember, it was only compatible with this game. Uh, and I never, I did, no, I did have it. My dad actually bought it for me with a load of just like random crap off one of those uh, shopping channels back in the day. Uh, but unfortunately, I never had this game. I never even, I've never even seen this game for sale, I'll be honest. Um, even now, I'm trying to think, have I ever seen this game for sale? Like 20 plus years later, I don't think I have. Differences from the predecessor, Air Force Delta. AFDS does not allow players to choose a difficulty level. Players can customize the color of their HUD, but cannot edit it. Unlike its predecessor, AFDS does not provide a way to check player stats. All right. The game's premise combines futuristic technology over population with global conflict. While it shares the same title as a Game Boy Advance game, the plot of Air Force Delta Storm is based on the previous title in the series, Air Force Delta. 
Although it masquerades as a flight simulator, Air Force Delta Storm leans more towards arcade-style gameplay, devoid of historical context or realism. All right, let's have a little look at this, shall we? Oops, let's actually load the executable. And, well, at least one thing's for sure. This is definitely going to be one of the games of all time. Air Force Delta Storm, and there's a very futuristic looking MIG or something. So 2001 Konami. So this game must have come out like literally a year after the Dreamcast one, I guess. Ooh, I'm liking that music. Oh, listen to that. It's like a, a Western kind of tang to that guitar rift. Okay. So, um, let's have a look at options because we definitely want to control it. Here we go. So, we want that on normal. Novice. We don't want novice. Expert controls. Ace controls. Uh, okay. So, air brake is actually on. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Fire machine guns, launch missiles, increase speed, decrease decrease speed. Okay, well, leftward horizontal movement, rightward horizontal movement. So what is? All right, well, it mentions like throttle controls, but okay, I'm not seeing like a huge amount of difference between those two. Um, so whatever, we'll go for ace controls because I do like having like full control. Um, and let's go for a new game. Cutscenes. Never any of these in the Dreamcast one. Alexi Benitos, Voice acting. 2000 and some. 2000 and some, okay. Allied forces, 11th aerial fleet. <gasps> this mission is to eliminate the landing troops. Okay. I repeat, aim for the landing craft. Keep the troops from taking the beachhead. Alright. So we've got a Eurofighter Typhoon. We've got some futuristic Russian looking thing. And we've got what looks like, I know that plane, I just can't think what it's called. Um, it's an early 50s plane, it's not a Sky Saber, I'm not sure. Not sure why there's, this is so heavily filtered, kind of hurts to look at. So three planes against an entire carrier battle fleet. Okay, I like those odds. They're very Ace Combat-esque odds. Let's have a go at this, shall we? So they're doing a landing with hovercraft, which is interesting. I'm hoping we're in the Eurofighter, all that fancy. Russian plane. I'm gonna say we're probably not though. No, we're in the piece of shit. Because of course we are. Alright. So we have a kind of very detailed map there, which is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. So why is why is the machine guns? Got ya? Now, missile is on the B button. It's running nice. Nice and smooth, which is what we like. We do like our air sims to be smooth as possible. How many missiles have we got? Actually don't have that many missiles, which is curious. Right. Let's hit the speed. Let's see if we can't waste this guy. Now on this on this um, control mode, we have access to yawing, 
which is kind of important. Let's hit the air brake so we can slam behind this guy. Get fucked. Okay. Now, I think we should probably head towards the carrier fleet. I'm not seeing if we have any kind of afterburners, which is not great. Hey, look at that. That looks like a Harrier. And that is a primary target, I guess. Now, yeah, this air brake is going to be kind of broken. Because if we can just use that to stay behind them, that is where the power of these controls come in. However, he is maneuvering. Yeah, okay. I think we're just going to be wasting time out here. Now, what is the afterburners? Must have afterburners here somewhere. Surely. Although, maybe this thing just doesn't have afterburners. So, we've got the cockpit view. Because, of course, we do. Right, let's go low and go fast. There's the carrier fleet. See if we can't waste some of these on the way past. Visually, the game, it kind of basically looks like a Dreamcast game. I'm going to be honest. Wow, that carrier. That carrier was literally just splashed. Just from a few well-placed rounds. Oh my god, these, these ships are going down without too much resistance. That's interesting. All right, let's see if we can line up a strafing run. On these guys. Yep. Cool. Right. Let's provide some air support to these guys. Second wave inbound, huh? Is that so? Let's see if we can't strafe these guys and light them up. Well, he sunk. Down to David Jones' locker with you. Try and get rid of some of these ships. I know that's not exactly our primary objective, but... Wow, those carriers. They don't have any uh, close-in weapon systems or anything? Well, okay. I mean, I'm kind of glad they don't, not going to lie. That would be problematic if they did, I guess. All right, come on, let's lock this guy up. Although, it doesn't look like we really need to. Splashed him in the sea. Beautiful. Right, let's see if we can waste these guys. These... Man, these cannons are incredibly OP. But that's okay. You know, I'm sure this thing's rocking what? Some 20 millimeter guns, maybe 30 mils. We're going to enjoy those. Right, let's scratch the last. Salt ship. Salt ship looks cool. Ooh. Oh, that was it. All right. I guess we earned money. So I guess we're going to be buying aircraft, which is cool. I guess they're not going to start us with any, you know, like 4.5 gen aircraft or fifth gen aircraft or even sixth gen nothing like that we don't need to see the uh, replay this is delta leader to control mission accomplished now returning to base and this is casual roger it's really bothering me what is that aircraft it is the year 2000 and some Food supply problems have reached a critical limit. The world is divided into two halves. Those who can eat and those who cannot. Advances in genetics mean that even the worst diseases can be cured. But the earth has not been turned into the Garden of Eden that was promised. Instead, war rages on as they always have. Alexei Peninsula. The Allied forces and the United forces come to a new twist in their long struggle. Okay, so there we actually get our proper intro. Air Force Delta Storm. 
Now let's see. So this is the actual combat map. This is interesting. Okay, so I guess we can... So that's our, our base that we've just... Ca oh, no, right. So that's where we've just captured, I guess. That's how many kills we've got. Ah, yes, we're in the A7. Now, what was the A7 actually called? A7 Fighter. A7 Fighter Jet. What was it called? The Corsair. Yes, that's what we're in. How could I forget? So this is kind of interesting. We can actually pick our missions, and there's a lot of them. Can we purchase a new plane? Got briefings, shops. Okay. Let's buy. So we can buy the Tiger too. Now, if you remember, short select, range number, attack. Okay. So if you remember, in the first game, we actually started off in the F5 Tiger 2. So that's curious. I guess we can also get, oh no, we can get the fish bed. Oh, no, 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 no. Which is rated higher than the Tiger 2, curiously. Um, missile ability. So that's got a lot more missiles on it. I wonder how that stacks up to what we have. So that's only got 28 missiles. That seems to be the better airframe. Oh, right, I'm looking at the wrong thing, I think. Right, I see. Actually, that does have higher speed, higher power, higher mobility. Let's take the Tiger 2, though, for old time's sake. Sure. We can't afford the uh, fish bed, though. That's fine. Fish bed was an interesting plane. It had a, I think it had the um, movable nose cone. So view guidance on strategy. Defensive parameters. The Battle of Cast... Cast the SC. Okay. There has been a report from some fishing boats in the area. It seems there is an unidentified fleet converging on the Castilia Sea. Contact has since been lost with the boats, leading us to believe it is a United Forces fleet. You must find the fleet and annihilate it. Over and out. Sure thing, solid snake. Actually, that kind of looks like Big Boss, to be honest. So we've got the Corsair. And the Tiger. The Corsair is actually better. Like a much better A-frame. Or uh, airframe. Alright, well, we'll take the Corsair out then. Cool. Oh, that's given us like another mission down here. But I'm guessing... I'm guessing we can't go straight to it. Break now. So we have to take territory. I'm going to be honest, guys. I like this. This is cool. This is different. I'm not sure what we're doing. That map probably should have been somewhere else. Not going to lie. So, we've got an enemy MiG closing. That's fine. Let's go splash this Russian junk in our very old, very outdated American junk. To be fair... Oh! Wait! What? Really? I mean, sure, I guess. Well, that was barely worth the loading screen, huh? We definitely don't need to see the uh, replay of that. So that's... Oh! So that's got, like, a countdown on it. Does that mean it's clear for, like, four turns or four movements? I'm not sure. A United Forces fleet has been detected. The mission is to attack the United Forces fleet. Show us what you got. You got a big boss. Oh, oh, look at the drop pods. Okay. Hey, we've got our own carrier fleet here. S this is sweet, man. All right. There's the air brakes deploying. Nice detailed model. All right, let's break away from our fleet, as it looks like we're the only <laughs> we're the only aircraft flying combat air patrol here. That's fine, 
I guess. We've got enemy fighters coming in. Then do we do we protect the fleet or do we just go straight for the enemy carriers? Also, it looks like we've actually exhausted the two missiles that we've already used, which is interesting. So does our fleet not have any aircraft? It's kind of like the UK's carriers at the moment. There's only enough aircraft to, you know, fully load out one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we're the only... Uh, the three guys that we've seen. And they have a battleship. Which is very interesting. Wow, we just took out a battleship with a few rounds. That's interesting. Right, we've got missiles coming in. Which is not fantastic. Right, let's go low. Let's go low. We just sunk two battleships. Which is a miracle. But that's a hell of a fleet they've got there. Wow, they've actually got... They've actually got some serious air defense here. At least it kind of feels like it. So the Corsair... Corsair 2 is performing very well. Uh, it might not actually be a battleship. Kind of looks like a um, destroyer. Looks like we have friendly aircraft in the sky as well. That's not actually friendly, is it? That's absolutely not friendly. Right. Let's go take out the... Come on, baby. Come on. Ooh. Wow, that looks like an Aegis cruiser. It's just literally lighting us up like the 4th of July. I don't think we have any kind of countermeasures. Which is not fantastic. Not going to lie. Missile alert. Ooh, come on. Yep, he's done. Wow. If only fleets went down that easy in real life, huh? That would be bad. <laughs> that would be, like, incredibly bad. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Missiles coming in. We're going to go low. Wow. That is their entire fleet dusted. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy there, fella. Right, let's hit the air brakes and see if we can't just outturn them. I got you locked up, boy. Ooh. Right up the tailpipe. Can we get him? Can we get him? That looks good. Clean kill. Oh. I wish we could, like, choose to finish the mission if we wanted. That would have been cool. All right. So, I... I don't know if we have to pay for repairs. I'm not seeing us paying for repairs, which is interesting. We have made some nice money, but then, you know, we sunk an entire enemy battle group. So I would assume so. Ah, look, yeah, so, okay, so we're still damaged and we only have, I guess, the missiles. Right, let's land at the airbase. Let's take off. Um, do we have to... Okay, so we don't have to repair our aircraft. Ironically, if we had taken that out, we would have been destroyed. Okay, let's take the Corsair out again. Well, you know what? Let's just get another briefing, see what the mission is. Through the Valley of Death. We have just received word from the Intelligence Division. There is an enemy fortress on a bridge in the upstream portion of the Kayan River, near the foothills of Mount Megalith. Your mission is to cut off the United Forces supply route on the Kayan River. You must attack and destroy the fortress and seal off the transport routes on the river. It looks to be a difficult mission. But success is vital. The airspace above the gorges is saturated with aerial defense networks. Great. 
We recommend that you fly within the gorge and be on guard against making contact with the rock face. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be making any kind of contact with the rock face. Now, let's not take off. Let's see if there's anything to actually buy any new airframes. Oh, sweet merciful Jesus. How the Metal Lords have smiled upon us. Oh, we can get the F-4 Phantom, legendary aircraft. Hmm. Now, we can actually afford the Phantom. The last of the gunfighters. Hmm, I would like the Thunderbolt, though. We can afford the Thunderbolt, though. Let's... Let's grab the F4. Sure. Thank you. Right, let's... Take off. I don't really want to sell any aircraft. Uh, we're going to take the Phantom. Phantom just has way better stats. Yeah, so I see. So, um... That place that we'd already taken over is now hostile again. It's interesting. I don't even mind that. That's kind of like a really cool, unique concept. At least I think it's pretty unique. All right. Ah, this, we have afterburners now. Sweet. Let's ride. Finally have a aircraft with Afterburners. We have joined... <laughs> I don't know. The, the 50s. When did the F4... When was the F4 produced? Um, I'm pretty sure the F4... Was produced in the, the 60s. It was originally going to be called the Demon. Um, but they didn't, they didn't like that name. <laughs> so they changed it to the F4 Phantom. Uh, they also massively redesigned it as well. Right, got you locked up, boy. Oof. He's coming in hot. Let's see if we can't stay in his little turn circle there. He's fighting. He's fighting. Oof. Smoked him. Cost us four missiles, but we bodied him. So I guess you, we could grind out money if we wanted to, because we could just keep going to hot zones, which is interesting. Okay. So we've got to go through two hot zones here. All right, let's bring up the map. Now, the F4, I believe, also... Um, now, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure it was the first fighter to also have uh, a radar um, and interestingly enough as well with the uh, the phantom uh, it had such a complicated and amazing um, weapons targeting system for the time they a it actually had a second crew member just to handle the weapon systems and all that kind of stuff, which made it an incredibly um, powerful fighter in its day. And it was built with modularity in mind as well, which is wicked because these things are still in use now. This, this plane is 70 years old and it's still being used now. But because it's so modular, they've been um, able to be humongously upgraded as the years have gone on. New engines, um, way more advanced weapons have been added, more advanced sensors. Really is a um, uh, incredible airframe. Okay. This bad boy has outlasted a lot of airframes. All right, let's see if we can't light this. Oh, yep, they're lighting us up. Yeah, these guys were used a lot during Vietnam. 
But of course, the model that was used in Vietnam is not the same model that's, uh, you know, still in service today. She has been humongously overhauled since those, since those dark times. I'm not really sure what sort of gun range we actually have. Seems to be about 300 sort of range. We are taking hits. I don't get the feeling that we have as much maneuverability in this game as we do in, like, say, Ace Combat. It doesn't feel like we're moving as quickly. So we may have to lean on the missiles a little bit more. So we launch a missile some evasive maneuvers and get the hell out of there decent amount of money for that right through the valley of death our mission this time is to neutralize the bridge fortress the enemy has lots of firepower here also watch out for the buildings the airspace above the gorge is saturated with the aerial defense network. We recommend that you fly within the gorge and be on guard against making contact with the rock face. Yeah, they really don't want us to make contact with the rock face, do they? Oh man. Wow. I hope that's not us going down. Well, <laughs> let's hope not. Oof. Just smoke that F-18. Super Hornet is a curious... I don't know if that's a Super Hornet, but that's a kind of curious choice because they're like a naval um, carrier aircraft, whereas the uh, F-4 is a true multi-role fighter. Okay, let's go. Let's light the fires. So we have enemy contacts dead ahead. Enemy ships. Well, he's got... Ooh. I don't know if we have, like, countermeasures or anything. Doesn't look like it. Oh, we went straight into that. I thought once they exploded, you could fly through them. I'm pretty sure we did that. So what happens it, now we've lost our F4? Can we retry or is that thing dusted? <gasps> no. And I guess now if I take off, um, actually, if we go back to the shop, buy can't afford that so we can buy another f4 okay so if we take off have we got to fight our way back through it we'll take the corsair out okay so we can just go straight in again cool Right, let's try. Oh, we don't have any afterburners or anything this time. That's unfortunate. All right, let's hit the deck. This thing does look like it's got some pretty solid cannons on it, though, to be fair. All right, you sons of fucking bitches. It's a shame the enemies aren't still destroyed. That would have been, like, pretty cool. I'm not sure the best way... Yep. Yep. Take some evasive maneuvers. Nope. We should go fly on by these guys. As much as I would like to tag these guys. 
yeah, we, we're not going to be able to. Unless... Oof, we kind of just... There we go. That's the hit of the whole fruit right there. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can't circle back and re-engage these guys. Now, is that ship actually going to sink? That would be pretty sweet. Oof. He's trying. He's trying. Oh, ho, ho. wasted his ass. Okay, cool. Right, let's avoid. Whoa. Okay, okay, it's fine. Everything is fine. There's the rock face that apparently we're not allowed to uh, get acquainted with. Whew. All right. Let's go. Those two vessels are burning. They are just cash in our bank reserves. Let's move. This thing is not a fast aircraft at all. It's like we've got a hard turn coming up. Hard turn to the left. It's fine. Yeah, the way you kind of drift with the yaw actually is totally different. It kind of lets you just kind of drift past. It's weird. It's definitely not like... Oh man, look at the weapon systems on this thing. All right, let's see if we can take the bridge. Okay, avoid the missiles. Yep, she's gone. Whoa, low bridge, dude. It's fine. It's fine. Let's try and avoid. Let's tag you with a missile. Nice. Kiss my ass. We actually have a time limit, which I'm guessing is kind of like a, a fuel limit sort of thing, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. Let's see if we can't. Oof. Take out another enemy or two. Let's just go straight to the objective. Don't want to risk getting shot down here. I'm assuming we get a pretty healthy payout, to be honest. For destroying the ships. Not so sure about, like, AA equipment. You know, a cruiser is going to be worth a lot more <laughs> than, a, than a ship. But... What is this? What is this? <coughs> okay, it's like a little missile platform. Oh, he hit me. He hit me. Yep. It's a little AA platform. All right. Oof. Let's hit him with a missile. Wow. That is a large... That is a large AA gun. Now, I'm guessing if we take out the ship, let's go down. I guess if we take the ship out, like all the weapons on it also get dusted. That makes sense. Right, let's fox you. All right. These missiles seem to have a pretty healthy range to them as well, like splash damage. Let's see if we can't get rid of this guy. You're done. You're finished. Nice. Oh, we've got the fort coming up. I can see it. That thing looks like a nasty little hornet's nest. Watch the tower. Watch the tower. She's cool. Tower, let's go. Oh, we've got some missiles coming in. Oh, you're dusted. Come on, baby. Come on. You're finished. Try and take some of these boats out. Ooh. He's trying to get me with that double tap. I say, not today. Let's get this bird home in one piece. Or at least, still flying. Oh, man. So these guns here. Whoa. Cut straight through that flak. Get rid of you. Another missile frigate. I'll we'll have to handle him. That's fine. Let's double back. Air brake. 
hard turn. Don't want to bleed off too much of that speed, though. Speed is life. Whoa. Jeez, we're taking some knocks. Right, let's get you locked up. I think we've got both of those. And we are running out of time here. That's okay. Let's get these AA guns dusted. Although, curiously, they are firing in, like, random... Oof. Patterns. They're not actually aiming at us, which is a bit strange, but whatever. You're mine. You're mine. And we're going to thread that needle. Good night. Oof. Because there is no penalty for damage, it would assume. It would seem, anyway. Oof. Those things hurt, though. They do hurt. I'm pulling down. Don't worry about it. Right. Let's go for this carrier. Or not this carrier. This frigate. Whatever it is. Got you padlock, son. All right. Two minutes left on the tank. You're scratched. Okay. Come on. Come on. It's not what I want to target. There you are. Get out of here. Few targets left, but this thing is literally holding itself together. By hopes and hopes and dreams right now. Alright, let's get the bridge. You're done. Bingo. Oh! The bridge landed on us! Seriously? Son of a... That's fine. <laughs> Do we actually... Although we've lost our craft, I'm curious. Do we? No, we don't get nothing. We don't get any payout at all. Wow. We need some money, huh? Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave that here because we're on like 48 minutes. I could quite happily sit down and play this all evening. Um, this is this is cool. This is different. It's definitely got a little bit more to it than um, some of the other arcade shooters at the time. Arcade um, air games anyway. I like it. It's way better than the original. Huh. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you thought. And as always, till next time.